there's a lot of room for talented people in the fishing industry. Have a second plan of employment. You can't be afraid to fail. I think long term is the goal. Bring something new to the market and you'll be remembered. You know, I love to see young people getting into the industry. There's room for young people. There's way more opportunities than I think people would ever imagine. So I think sometimes people get discouraged from fishing. It's not as prestigious as going to law school or, you know, there's a lot of other things that are that probably sound better than, what are you going to do? Well, Johnny's going to go fish. Let's go fish. You know, I mean, I mean, I, you know, my family wasn't really big on my career choice. I can tell you that. But you know, um, one thing I always try to tell people, though, this is really important to me, is that. You have to love the resource and the industry more than you love yourself. This industry has a knack for attracting egomaniacs that, you know, they're fishing for the wrong reasons. It's all, oh, look at me, look at me. How many, how many times can I put my name on my, you know, they even have their name on everything on their boat, whatever. And, you know, when you're really on fish, you don't want people to know. You don't want people to know who you are. The more obscure and incognito you can do something, the better. But, you know, it isn't about fishing for some people. It's about look at me, look at me. I never got any attention in high school. Everybody beat me, but now I'm a pro fisherman. Doesn't that sound great? You know, and there's a lot of, and those people just flash. I mean, they're, they're there for two or three years. Then all of a sudden they realize, you know, this world's pretty mean. Nobody cares. I'm upside down, you know, and, you know, my girlfriend's pregnant, I don't have any money, and, and then not only do they quit fishing, I mean, they just, they just, you know, they just walk away from it. And, you know, if you, you have to love the resource in the industry, and um, it isn't about you. This is way bigger than any person. So I did that fishing careers workshop, and I was amazed at the, the range of people that were there. I was amazed at the questions I got. And my advice then is the same as my advice now, I think, so often people use social media, uh, they use cell phone video, they use a couple of, uh, of methods to try and find the, the quick way to success. Uh, maybe blow up their name, maybe develop their deal. I think long term is the goal. Long term everything. A long term strategy for how you're going to grow your brand. A long term strategy for how you're going to make sure that you stay fishing even though you get into an industry that even though it's the fishing industry, it can sometimes take you away from days on the water. I think you need to think long term about your image uh, publicly and, and doing the right thing, uh, not being implicated in, in, in uh, you know alcohol issues, drug issues, trying to keep your nose clean. I, th I think I think th when you make the choice and you're a young, driven angler to go that direction, there is no halfway. Uh, it's full on committal. Or, or, or failure, in my opinion. You can't be afraid to fail. You know, and, the, and, and failure isn't really failure. Failure is just you learning what you did wrong and you don't do that same thing next time when you come back at it. You know, that's, that, I mean, I failed the first time I started guiding as a fishing guide. And I say I failed because I wasn't able to pay my bills and to pay my rent the way I wanted to because I wasn't able to book enough trips. But when I came back at it five years later with a different approach, maybe it was eight or 10 years later, I don't even know, but I tried it when I was like 18 or 19 and I just couldn't cut it. You know, spring and fall, fish in the rivers, I needed a boat. I needed to fish all year to make the money. And I realized, hey, I, I can't guide because I can't work in the summer because there's no steelhead in the rivers or salmon in the rivers, so they're not near shore. I need a boat, I need to be a charter captain. I need to fish inland, I need to fish bass, I need to fish pike and muskies and until I realized you know that went maybe 10 years and I spent a lot of time not guiding and just mastering those other crafts. Spending a lot of time dedicating to be really really good at them. Fishing tournaments, fishing muskie tournaments, bass tournaments, salmon tournaments, learning from the best. You know that's how you get to be the best. You fish with the best, you watch the best, you learn from the best you know and and it goes the right way, man, you can, you know. Well, I think the, the, the best piece of information that was ever came to me is that, that nobody is gonna to come to Spring Lake Park to buy a fish house. You gotta get the product out there. You know, I, I traveled from Maine to Montana, shaking hands and meeting people, and then you, you have a, a following all the way across the country where, so you, you just got to get out of your backyard if you're going to think you're ever going to get paid by people in the fishing industry. Start in the summer, have a uh, plan B, have a second plan of employment, and
start your guide business in an area that does have the need for it. You know, I mean, we've seen even the Brainerd Lakes area where you, there used to be 50 guides working around there. Now it's built up and the guides have kind of gone away and there's still a lot of guides around there and it's still a good place to work if you market yourself right and you consistently produce fish. I would say go to where there are trips because I see a lot of new guides where they're opening up on some lake that's there's nothing around it for 200 miles and it's like hey what are you doing you're starting a guide or a guide service on a mediocre fishery with no tourism base like really do your research above and beyond and make sure you're a good business person before you get into it take baby steps you you got it you got to start small work your way in um, and that would probably be the best advice I could give somebody the, the, the sky is the limit but but start off in your infantile stages. You know, you gotta crawl before you can walk. I look at the fishing industry this way. There's, there's two directions that you can, you can go about doing this. If you are the type of person that is really good with numbers, because there is the business side of things, and let's just look at it from a, from a management and an accounting standpoint, where, where school and marketing numbers and all these things become very important on one side of it. But, so there's, there's definitely opportunities in the fishing world on that side of things. But what drives the business and what makes the sales is the passion side. It is, it is also a little, it, it's pretty hard to find a niche inside this end of it, but it is all, it's what drives. And the thing that's unique about the fishing industry is that the products have to touch a core of the angler in order to resonate and make sales over long term. Anybody can come out with products that last one, two, three years life cycle on a retail shelf. But if you want to make an impact in the fishing industry, you've got to get products there that, that work for long periods of time. And those products are developed over time and introduced and used by a passionate core. And that passionate core will ultimately drive the industry from here to the next level. There's a lot of room for talented people in the fishing industry. I, I guess the advice would be understand it's a business. Understand that the, if you want to guide, you need to approach that in a way. If you want to get into media, you need to approach that. It starts with a, a solid education of understanding what is the need of the marketplace or in the marketplace. So, uh, you know, if you want to guide, I, I'd love to guide myself, but it, it's one of those situations you got to go into eyes open and say, am I on the right fishery? Am I capable of doing this? Do I want to do this? Uh, can I do this 12 months out of the year? But the second thing is it really starts with education. I think education, it, it, not only does it help you become more knowledgeable, but what it does is it allows you to commit to a project and, and to really understand what it takes to succeed at a high level. Marketing, I don't care if you're a guide, I don't care if you're in media, I don't care if you're doing uh, web videos and everything. Those who succeed understand how to market and how to, how to bring others to the table and, and make people aware of what you're trying to sell, whether it's a product, a service, or whatever. And I, but I, I, bottom line is, I say if you want to get into the fishing industry, I'd say go for it, but understand that it's a business and understand that you're going to have to fill a need, and that just doesn't mean catching fish. I think right now would be the realization that it is not an, an easy industry to get into. Okay, Everyone wants to be a tournament stud and walk out of the shoot and get sponsors throw money at them. And I think that uh, that's perhaps the toughest way to do it. You have to be a very special in the individual to have that skill level and then even if you have the skill level you have to work literally 80 hour weeks to hone your marketing skills, to hone your business skills and to be able to talk to people who would sign a check for you in an intelligent fashion where you would affect their sales. Uh, so it's possible to do it. Corey Springle in the walleye world is a great example. But I can tell you when Keith and I got involved with uh, tournaments way back in the day, there was no tournament anglers for, in the walleye world that got paid a dime for fishing. We were the first ones to do it, so it wasn't easy then either. So, But I think if you're looking at the general uh, drift of how you get involved with the fishing industry, there's a couple ways. I mean, you can get a good marketing degree and perhaps get involved with the companies on a marketing basis, which keeps you in the pulse of what's happening. You might not get to fish as much as you want, but it is a way to be in the, in the business. 
I think the one thing that has changed is that if you're serious about wanting to get in the fishing business, that you can put the time in as a guide, and I've actually helped a couple guides that are extremely well-known names right now, showed them how to do it on social media. I don't think that the opportunities could be any better for a young man or lady who wanted to get into fishing than they are right now today. And that's a pretty outrageous statement because everything else is pretty negative. And the way that you do it is through guiding. You make sure you get your captain's license, you get all the safety factors you know, in place. You, you obviously need to have be a pretty skilled angler. You work on your lakes that you want to fish and guide on. But every single day that you're on the water, you put posts on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube videos. And you promote your guide business, but not just the fish. You talk about techniques, you talk about fishing reports. You guys with Angling Buzz, great. If the, guy, if the young man is an up and coming stud and he knows his area and he's fishing it every day, he can give you the information you're looking for to get out to the public in terms of fishing reports. So, you know, I helped Jim Hudson take his guide business to a huge level before, you know, he had the unfortunate accident. Uh, I've, I've talked, I basically helped Guy Sibley up in Lake Ogibbic. It is not hard to do, but you have to be honest, trustworthy, work hard, and you can develop a name. And then later on, you can even get some sponsorship opportunities through guiding. And, you know, if, if you have the skill level, then you can dabble in the tournaments. And if you have some luck, you can maybe keep piggyback your guiding into the tournament world. Uh, that's in the northern part of the United States. The bass world, I think you can go into the college ranks, be a, turn into a stud there, like some of the young guys that are, are coming out now, that companies like working with young men and ladies. And uh, if you're a special individual from a skill standpoint, you could maybe make a go of it. But I can tell you right now, it's just exactly like any other professional sport. You better be the cream of the crop. You know, everyone wants to be a professional basketball or baseball player and stuff. It's just very, very few people get to do that. But going, I think going through the guiding venue, it's a very achievable and way easier than it used to be. Back when I was young, a guide, what is he going to do? He couldn't get an article in In Fisherman. You know, he couldn't do that. He, he couldn't get on TNN. You know, you can, you can do things now so the public knows who you are. Get your education first. Make sure you go in and uh, get an education. If you want to, uh, well, if you want to get in as a fisheries person, okay, with the DNR, then you need a degree in biology, of course. But you should get a marketing or business degree and just keep moving forward with the opportunities in fishing that you can, you can make or that come along. But having that will really guide you in the proper direction if you want to make this a career. Um, I'm a guide and promotions guy and you know I always tell people that as a guide probably 30% of my you know what I do is fishing is the fish catching the fish the other is teaching so as a young person when you come in don't think that because you can catch a fish that you can excel in our industry because it's all about so many other things it's understanding and this one a lot of people won't really believe but there's sometimes there's times to talk and sometimes there's a lot of time to listen. And if you ask questions, it's good, but listen to advice that will propel you into the next level. And if you do that, you have a chance. I'm not gonna say it's for everybody. It never has been for everybody. I've seen the guys in this industry come and go by the hundreds. But for some of us that have stuck it out in a long way, we, uh, we wanna be mentors to young people, but we also want to make sure they understand what it's going to take for them to get to the next level. Be yourself and, and fish hard. <laughs> you know, just spend as much time as you can on the water and don't worry about the other things that'll come. You know, as, as long as you're passionate about fishing and that shows through, just be who you are. You, you know, it is what it is. It's fishing at the end of the day. It's fishing. It's um, carrying on those values and passing those on to someone else. I, I enjoy teaching fishing as much as I do fishing itself and so I think if you just spend time on the water, anglers learn from other anglers, and, and I'm always learning. I think if you talk to any angler, I don't care who they are, if they're eight years old or 80, they're still learning about fishing if they're really passionate about it. So, you know, just continue learning and, and, and being who you are, and, and the rest is going to come through. It's about what you can do for the industry first. Whatever you could do for them, 
will relate uh, in how you're perceived. Uh, put your time in. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's not like winning the lottery. You wake up and uh, you've won. It's, uh, you know, uh, what do you have to offer? Can you catch fish? Well, a lot of people can catch fish. Uh, can you sell products? And uh, I would say, if, if anything else, be, f be true to yourself, be faithful to a sponsor when you land one, and don't jump around too much. And I believe there's room for everybody who wants to be in fishing, because fishing is a growing sport. And I was on the outside in the past, and I'm on the inside now. Uh, so uh, build up your reputation. And it's not about, um, it's, it's about posting, and it's about filming, and it's about all that stuff but it's about what you can share that maybe no one else has ever seen. It's about new things. Bring something new to the market and you'll be remembered.